All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to That's a Fun Show on Tuesday. We are the people that do that show on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> I'm your host, Tim GK, and I'm joined by Jose Fuentes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I heard, uh, if, uh, my, my, I heard my, my name, and it took me a second to... Oh, wait, yeah, he's talking to me. <laughs> and I'm there, too. My Baja Blast is ran off, so I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> my caffeine for oh, the day is fading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to be talking about Clip Studio today and kind of doing like a uh, uh, a beginner's guide, like a, an actual like hard skill craft segment on that Tuesday show like we've been talking about, talking about Clip Studio. Jose is going to be our resident Clip Studio expert, so this will be his uh, beginner's master class, if you will. Uh, I apologize in advance. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see there. Uh, uh, I had something pop up here, which we'll get to in a second. I'm going to say yes. Um, but before we get into all that, uh, we are going to be talking about what we have did this weekend. Uh, we've been uh, enjoying uh, media-wise. And Jose already kind of gave me some some uh, spoilers beforehand, before the show. But uh, I understand that you've had uh, some drama on your, your weekly plane of ARC. Yes. Yes. ARC people programmers get your stuff together <laughs> <laughs> perfect yeah like uh, arc did not like me today or uh yeah today nice yeah so you were you had, you had made a deal with another player essentially to, to buy some re trying to extricate yourself from the deal everything <laughs> blew up essentially yeah yeah and it wasn't like it, i know that uh you know anybody that plays games like that like uh like games like Ark or even like Des, you know, you see you mentioned Destiny or yeah. any other like big involved like internet based games and whatnot. Like there's always going to be some kind of lag, some kind of like you know, mm -hmm. what I mean? yeah. And it just happened. I I just got was lucky enough to when I tra went to transfer back to my server, uh, I hit a lag spike right then and there. And oh, yeah. so when it when it rubber banded, uh, it took my stuff and didn't give it back. Naturally. Actually, yeah, uh, I was streaming uh, some Hell Let Loose over the weekend uh, with some friends, uh, and we got enough people in there to make our own squad and, and kind of lock it down to just us. But uh, nice. yeah, I think it was, I think it was the German offensive at Hurtgen Forest, something like that. Um, but I was a squad leader. I was setting up our spawn points, and we were progressing. And uh, right as we got into an engagement, like really close quarters, just kind of walked around a corner, and there's another enemy squad coming the same, like the opposite way. <laughs> and I'm about to start spraying my thing clips. I rubber band, and then I uh, I'm on the ground like 50 yards back. Oh, I hate that so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Man, I wish like I never had that playing Halo back in the day. That was never like really a, a thing, right? right? There was definitely a me rounding the corner and getting shot in the face. Oh, yeah, that happened sure. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, I make a point of telling people every time when we I used to play Halo, like, listen, I'm your handicap. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> so, you guys have ever gone yeah, bowling? You ever been on a league? I'm the handicap. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't hopped on Halo too much, uh, a little bit for the new event, but mostly I've just been uh, playing uh, Hell at Loose and Destiny. But, uh, since nice. I maxed out the Halo season pass, uh, right? Yeah. I played it for the new Halo for a minute, and that's I haven't had a chance to get because when I when I play Halo, I want to be able to have time to like I want to start in like the afternoon and finish when the sun comes up or something. You know what I mean? Like, that, yeah, like, I want to be able to have time because like Halo to me is like like. I don't know. I had Xbox when it first came out. And so when Halo first came out, I was like, it was the best game in the world for oh, me. Yeah. Like, I just, I loved it. I loved the whole story. I liked the idea. And then when it came to like the other Halo 2, Halo 3, and blah, 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 you know what I mean? Just, mm -hmm. I followed the progression of the story the whole way. And so yeah. I like to sit there and just immerse myself in it. Yeah. And Halo is definitely a, the one of those titles where it, 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 it got big enough that whenever. Like, no matter the age bracket they fall on, but if you're, like, if someone had played any games at all from, like, 2002 onward, when you get them into a room and see a bunch of other, like, dudes around the Xbox, they're going to be like, oh, I know exactly what's happening in that man. <laughs> <Right. laughs> 
Yeah, I almost missed Gen Con one year because we had a LAN party for him. <laughs> My wife was like, are we going to the convention or not? It's like, oh, I forgot. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Halo, good times. Yeah, sounds, it's so good. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, so uh, other media-wise, uh, have you been uh, reading or uh, watching anything this last week? Um, I was reading. I started, like, audio book booking um. I've read a lot of like HP Lovecraft and different versions, oh, yeah. people, people's like different, like, like notes and whatnot on, on the, his books and stuff. Mm-hmm. I started reading like one, I like, there's a uh, website you can go to a uh, LibriVox and oh, yeah. they have a, a bunch of them on there. And I like, I like listening to those. I used to listen to those when I worked uh, in the freezer at the Walmart DC. Oh, yeah. So I would like be in the cold and I'd put those on that kind of would just get me to forget about the cold while I was working. Nice. So um, I started going through those again and then there's another one, Red Harvest, the Star Wars book. Oh, yeah, I kinda, yeah. I kind of just started. I'm not really that far into I mean, I, I, I just started. I start, just started like six months ago or something like that. I'm only right. in like a few chapters in. Yeah. So. It's, you definitely have those books where like it takes you way longer to read through than you, you want to. Right? Yeah. I have had Red Harvest on my list for a while, but I haven't had a chance to get to it yet. Yeah. So far, it's pretty neat. Like, I can't really give you spoilers because I'm not that far along sure. into it, but like it seems to me like it starts off like you're there's a school and the, the like the ch- trainees can decide which direction they're going to go like light or dark and huh. like oh this guy this guy's leaning towards the dark side he's probably going to go that way I'm like wait a minute that was a thing that's that's kind of cool interesting okay so I, like I just that. haven't had the chance to like because it it was on my other phone and I I got to re-download it onto my current phone and then. Yeah. I'll just put it on and work, listen to that. But I think the last time I did it was uh, uh, last time I watched, I uh, listened to it was I want to say March, February, March. I think we were on our way to Pennsylvania to visit okay. family and friends. Nice. But it's a great so far. It's a great story. I just got to get back into it. No, nope. I still think we need to get uh, Mackenzie on one of our episodes and do like a episode on like the cultural significance of Star Wars and modern storytelling or something. <laughs> really. There we go because that, be cool. yeah. Uh, or, or as I'm like a uh, encyclopedia of the old canon, she is all about the new canon. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, she's also a Hugh uh, hating Christensen stand. So <laughs> she is a fan. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see uh, how he uh, plays in the uh, uh, Obi Wan show. Yeah, I'm. I have a friend <clears throat> who's a pretty good fan of his as well. And he was like, like I've I've read uh, like articles about it, and like they're gonna do flashbacks, and they're gonna have Anakin and, and Obi Wan and during the Clone Wars again. I was like, that's actually kind of dope, All right? I wasn't sure if I actually liked him as as Anakin because I thought he was kind of weird, but I definitely liked him as like like pre Darth Vader, Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah, I definitely so, thought he came yeah. kind of into his own with Episode Three, but um, I think more so my issue with the prequels was the writing at that point uh the feel like yeah. i i liked the plotting and the uh the actors involved i thought the, the the some of the writing didn't give them a whole lot to work with i have gone on record stating that uh finn got a bad bad rap like mm-hmm. so much potential with that guy right. man i was so mad <laughs> all right I'm yeah. Um, i'm glad at least that uh probably for a lot of people involved with uh, the sequel trilogy too that like uh, that's been very hard for them to get work afterwards, even though, like, you know, you imagine working with something like Star Wars, even if it wasn't a fan favorite, it should kind of blow up your career. But for apparently for Daisy, well, yeah, you would think, yeah, apparently for Daisy, really, it's been really hard for um, uh, the guy who played Finn, I can forget, John Boyega. Uh, it's also been yeah. harder for him. Uh, but uh, Oscar Isaac, yeah, he, but he, came, the... he came out complaining about it too. Like, he get, came out like openly saying, like, you know, this, you know, I got. I'm not sure if he's actually saying he got posed, but like definitely complaining about like aspects of the movie. So yeah, definitely. I, I definitely think that uh, if he was given maybe a little bit more control over what he thought Finn should do, it might be a different story for him. He might actually get right. uh, more development of Finn. But uh, yeah, Oscar Isaac, however, uh, sort of uh, he, he he's the he's the one who got out and was able to. Uh, well, him and uh, oh, who's Kylo Ren? Uh, Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Adam Driver. They both of them managed to get through and, and, and find a bunch of roles afterwards. And I think 
Well, Adam I Driver. Didn't know Adam Driver was in the military. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, he was a. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go in the military, and then now I want to be an actor. Yeah, I couldn't even complain. Yeah, he was a marine, and then he went into. Uh, uh, he now he does uh, like a, a charity where he tries to connect the performing arts with military uh, service members. So that's cool. Yeah, so I think that's very cool. Yeah, this guy needs to stop doing stuff to make me respect him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, he was also in a movie with uh, Iggy Pop and Bill Murray, so I think at that point he won me over. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the Dead Keep Coming Back or something like that. Yeah, that yeah. such a weird movie. It's so weird, but yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's my jam is just weird off-the-wall stuff. I actually watched it. Like, that was, I had to you had Bill Murray. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And yeah, the, the more off-the-wall things get, the more I'm into it. Um, right. Yep. Yeah. But uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, we got Oscar Isaac now uh, going to be uh, Moon Knight for fans of the comic, which uh, it, so far with everything I'm seeing coming out of it, I'm so stoked. They we oh, they, dude. they they spoiled the goldfish today, which <laughs> that's, oh, what? was there another trailer? Uh, no, it was just a poster. Uh, the official Moon Knight page put out uh, a poster that was just the goldfish in a blender. Oh, <laughs> and so uh, that's. If they if they do get some, I think really, we've had that talk before. They 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 give too much away. They do give too like, much away, but uh, I I think that if they uh, just I think that's just the right amount of giving stuff away. Like they don't they're not explaining. They don't have like audio clips oh, okay. of him talking to the fish. It's literally just like <laughs> the deep cut. Where, like if no one knows what's going on, they're gonna see the little fish in a blender thumb Moon Knight logo and wonder what they're looking at. But for fans of the right. comics, it's like oh, they're going with some really fun cuts. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That I don't mind, but like, was it uh, New Mutants? They basically gave the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah there, was, you... there was no point in watching it. Right. I still no, did, but I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched it mostly to finally see uh, Sam Guthrie and Magic on screen. <laughs> yeah, um, I was a little weirded out, um, not by that, but uh, um, I wanted to see more uh, Ron. You know what I mean? mm. Sinclair, yeah, yeah, personally, like, but I mean, the chick that the girl that they had playing her, the one from uh, Game of Thrones, I thought she did a pretty good job, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Because she isn't she Scottish anyway, uh, uh, can't remember like her herself, Ma- I can't remember if Maisie is Scottish or if she's just uh, from the Midlands, gotcha, uh, but yeah, um. Uh, but yeah, uh, having her as uh, I thought that was very, very uh, uh, as Wolfsbane is very well cast, right? Yeah. I thought so too. Yeah, uh, what's he gonna say? I lost it. <laughs> uh, as for myself, that's how we roll on Tuesdays, exactly. Just yeah. so, you know, if anybody on here is new, that's how we roll on Tuesdays. Perfect, yep. <laughs> uh, what have I been uh, watching, reading? Uh, playing a lot of Hell That Blues recently. Uh, the game's kind of taken over my life. Um, uh, we've been doing a lot of that on stream too. So if you want to see some fun shenanigans, uh, it's twitch.tv slash do, do you have it on your Twitch? Yeah, we have it. Nice. Uh, yeah, my last VOD is uh, two hours of it. Uh, the, we're playing the German offensive in Hurt and Forest at uh, the last map of the night. And uh, me and uh, I'll, I'll probably clip it and, and put it up somewhere, but. Uh, our commander had we were we were going full on like um, Blitzkrieg where we were pushing each point and then a commander dropping spawns behind uh, the uh, enemy encampments as we took the one before that. So we were always just uh, at the base before the defenders could relocate. Nice. Uh, but the last one, they're actually able to position time, but. Um, uh, I'm not well spoiling the clip, but I'll, I'll be, it's funny right. you actually see it. But uh, at the last point, uh, the commander had put a spawn just like right off the flank of it. We, uh, my squad and like two other squads drop in. We start uh, running up the hill. Uh, I start the, the if you have kids or on TikTok, you know the sheesh the the sheesh. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Everyone in the line starts doing that over proximity chat. <laughs> Oh my god! Right, right before we get lit up by artillery and machine guns. That's fantastic. So uh, I'll clip that in the around room. But 
It was a, it's a fun game. Um, anytime you can get proximity chat and then also put it on top of like a, a semi-serious military simulator, <laughs> you're, you're, right. you're, you're in for some fun times. Um, reading, uh, I'm still reading through uh, the case of the General Slum, which is uh, fun and kind of, it's interesting reading uh, sort of, uh, uh, recently I actually got into, uh, just with everything going on, I've, I've been engrossing myself with some uh, documentaries on the history of, of Eastern Europe and uh, also understanding the uh, rise of the uh, uh, Ukrainian national movement that came out of the um, start of the, of the Soviet Union the idea of like pretty much as soon as we started, the Ukrainians were like, no, we should have our own unique identity because we were absorbed by all these other medieval kingdoms for so long. Um, so... And in uh, kind of seeing like the trademarks of what people credit to um, Ukrainian literature. So reading the story that I can see that, but it's in like a modern noir story. So it's kind of fun pinning those Interesting. Yeah. things together. Yeah. Uh, now, but, are you saying you're reading that? Is that uh, particularly just, just for, for interest sake or are you reading it for, uh, for research? I'm reading it more so for interest sake because uh, uh, I haven't like read too many European detective novels in a while. So uh, this is okay. one that got recommended to me. Um, and I thought it was an interesting time to, you know, things gone to to buy something and support the like, Ukrainian authors. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, so it, it, it's kind of a fun mix of, of re the research is kind of like a, 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 a back burner to it, but it's more so just enjoying the um uh, a dark comedy de detective story that's you know in a then kind of uh getting some more context for european european storytelling because i haven't read the whole lot of i have read a, a bit of stuff from like western europe like right yeah uh but i haven't read to me like pieces of fiction that come out of eastern europe so it'd be kind of interesting to see also like you know what does like bulgarian or hungarian storytelling look like or anything like that uh, yeah. A side note, I thought it was interesting today. Um, I was driving with my son. My my son's a musician, you know, yeah. 16 years old. And they, his class, his jazz band, his advanced jazz band class had a gig <laughs> at nice. a, a retirement community, I think. Okay. Because they, played, because they play a lot of old jazzy. You know, yeah, classes, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, naturally. For the time period. And anyway, we were driving home and uh, he was like, Dad, what's that flag up there for on this building? And I looked and I was like, are you for real? He's like, yeah, I was like, that's the Ukrainian flag. It's like, why is that there? It's like, you understand that where we live, it's got a really big Ukrainian yeah. popu like population. And a lot of them, there's like this four or five building, uh, like apartment complex Yeah, that a lot of them live in. Like, I mean, they have homes everywhere else, but like that is strictly like everyone knows, like if you're going to get an apartment there, you better be Ukrainian. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, like, that's what they're doing. They're, they're supporting their people. He's like, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. I was like, yeah. yeah. I know that was interesting. Like, I mean, I knew that, but like, I knew that because I drove past it so many times. I saw the building. I looked at it. Right, I even right. saw the church. The church they have is amazing. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like, I just to have to explain that to my son. I was like, oh, I must just take that for granted that it's there. Right. But man, I need, I need to be a little more observant to, to explain stuff to my kids. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I mean, we can't assume for if someone's to come through like uh, Woodburn, Oregon, right now, because uh, we uh, Woodburn, uh, Silverton area, uh, we have um, pretty healthy Russian populations. Okay. Like, but it's interesting going through there is a lot of them are also flying the Ukrainian flag because a lot of them, you know, were there because they That's wanted to get away from, uh, you know, either the USSR or from the Putin regime, depending on when they immigrated. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I know my daughter told me that uh, she's like, like Daddy, I have a, I have a, a girl in my class and she's Ukrainian. I'm like, that's cool. She's like, yeah. yeah, but her mom is Ukrainian and her dad is not. And she's she told me that they fight a lot. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is that because of what's going on? I was like, I am not. I can't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know their life. <laughs> <laughs> Could also just be something like they they don't agree on the right? dishes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that's, I can't answer that. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, comics wise, uh, I've been reading um, uh, the elements, or was it? 
Uh, oof. Now, wow. I'm mind blanking that. Is it the elements of wisdom? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> There we go. Uh, ah, they, uh, don't give me the subtitle here. Uh, the Rudiments of Wisdom. Uh, the from, Rudiments of Wisdom. Yeah, which uh, follows uh, Pete Wisdom, uh, who is a uh, being in the Marvel Universe, who is part yeah. of... Uh, hot Knives. Yes, Hot Knives. Uh, part of uh, MI13, and uh, this was actually a title put out by Marvel's Max imprint. Which, Interesting. yeah, for those of you who don't know the history, Max is they was was they still have it, but they don't use it a whole lot except for like the it's occasional. Not, yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, occasionally they'll put out like a random, uh, what's it called? Uh, like Punisher. Like if the one gets some like some really like heavy violent Punisher, <laughs> they'll put out there, but it hasn't really done anything outside of Publisher Punisher for. A while, but it's um, there was, was there uh, essentially their, their their 18 up imprint, yeah, yeah. Uh, they had a book called I think it was called Apache Skies, it was yes. pretty awesome. Like, I, I love that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought a lot of the works that went well through Max were actually like very well done. Um, so yeah. and uh, I, I love Beat Wisdom, so I picked this up, and uh, it, it's a fun time. Um, it follows uh, Beat Wisdom and MI 13 as um the uh, parts of the British government are considering defunding them while at the same time uh, parts of the fairy kingdom in other world are uh, launching insurgent attacks and preparing something big that they're trying to piece together. Uh, so does, does this take place after was it a how was a house of X and powers of X? I want to say it does because uh, like with with uh, with a Krakoa or whatever becomes their base and like they're going through the the tree portals. Oh no, this takes place before that. Uh, this okay. it's, it's, it's after House of M, but way before this. This takes place in about I want to say around the same time as like the Utopia storyline. Okay. Yeah, but this is like mid mid two thousands this early mid two thousands. Um, but uh, yeah, it involves uh. Uh, some fun fairy based conspiracies, uh, weird combinations of magic and counter terrorism tactics, <laughs> and uh, 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 Pete Wisdom finding himself in a uh, unwelcome dip uh, <laughs> diplomatic marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it, it's interesting, is it? <laughs> I, I'm enjoying it, but it's uh, it's definitely like, like oh, I haven't like. I like it. Pete Wisdom I, I, is actually a pretty good character. Yeah. My problem with him, I feel, is like as a whole, he, I don't know, I kind of feel like he can easily get switched out with uh, Gambit. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. That's the thing that I, I know felt... the logic is different. You know, Gambit's yeah. a little more, you know, bohemian esque. And, uh, yeah. But I feel that they, the two can get switched out. Yeah, that's, I like and that's uh, like my favorite parts of X Men are when they take uh, some of their uh, characters who maybe aren't as developed or don't have as a unique identity and do focus on them in something like this. Where yeah, you know, uh, I mean that's also like the the cool thing about the Gambit solo run where they get more into Gambit uh, gambling trickster with a heart of gold and and like his dealings with like the mob and trying to pay off his debts. And this one deals more with Pete Wisdom being like uh, essentially like a company man for the British government, and uh, right. uh, so you get a more unique identity that you don't wouldn't normally get when they're on main roster, when they're on like big roster comics. And so that's cool. See, and I, and I, I like that. Be, yeah. I like that idea because, like I said, I think I think uh, Wisdom's just a really cool, neat, just a neat character. Like mm. it's like the logic of him launching freaking knives out of his hands. It's like he almost paralyzed Colossus. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a ton of fun, and and I, I do like kind of these like almost like character studies that that, that they've done throughout, and having it on Max also where they can get a little more uh, right violent with it <laughs> um, is interesting. Yeah, that's been what I've been uh, enjoying this week. So uh, we cool. are... go ahead. Oh, you're really good. <laughs> no, I, I was about to launch into our topic, so if you want to continue this one for a little bit, or got a, oh, no, I got no, a thing good, to add good. on. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the uh, next item we'll be getting to uh, is actually getting into tonight's subject, which is uh, how how does one clip studio? Uh, so I have something set up here, but first I'll ask you, Jose. Uh, do you have a way of of sharing your screen with uh, Clip Studio, or is, is it does not? I don't. Okay, so perfect. Who is it? I think I have to get Tommy. I think Tommy is supposed to help me. Okay. Be able to connect my iPad to be able to share it with the screen. Okay, so then we're going to do something even better and perhaps more atrocious here. Um. Okay, we're going to go. Oh, one second. Give me one second here. Atrocious just means experimentation. Oh, that for sure. Uh, I'm do, I'm doing something <laughs> real quick here. Uh, I uh, did not realize that this was required beforehand. So uh, let me just enter in all my emails and private information before I share my screen, and then uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. That afterwards. might be why. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Perfect. All right. So I have like, I have, so I evidently am a collector of cups and not okay. even anything fancy. Sure. But it's where I put all my pins in. <laughs> so I got to ah. find the right cup that has the right pin. Uh, kind of the uh, same way with mason jars for painting. Uh, right. But uh, recently got, um, I forgot to called one of the Japanese style brush cups with the uh, wrap around it, like the, the weave around it. So that's been. Oh, neat. Yeah. It's been my jam for a little bit here. Okay. Cool. So that's a thing. So then let me see if this works. I noticed we had a, a sponsor okay. thing on our intro while you're in the middle of that. Yes. What was that? Yeah. DCO? Uh, oh, no, wait. D oh, did you just cut out? Are we getting that resolved? I'm doing something real quick here. Uh, there you go. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we're going to be doing this here. Now to get something set up. But first, go up here. Okay. So I don't have a pen or anything on me. It's <laughs> straight, straight mousing. <laughs> but... Uh, but uh, I figured I can I can be our example here. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, that was what I was oh. doing. I was registering for our, our heart of the free trial. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. Give me, give me a second. Maybe I can help. Um, I, I have Clip Studio on my on my computer, mm -hmm. right? But I don't normally use it. So we're gonna sure. maybe if I can finagle it and pull a page up, that'll give us okay. something to work with. Yeah, and uh, uh, I figure we're just gonna kind of go like through basics, just how <laughs> set, set, setting up the page, what set, what settings you like to enable or disable, and uh, and, and the the basics of some of the tools. Okay. Yeah.
man, I haven't done this on my computer in like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, I have done it never. So uh, the closest I've got to using any sort of like uh, visual processor on, on uh, my computer is using either GIMP or uh, Illustrator to letter. I, I remember GIMP. <laughs> yeah. I, outside of like my, my gaming stuff, I, I'm I'm a bit of a Linux boy, so GIMP is our, our go to for anything Photoshop esque. I can't fault you for that. Yeah. Okay. Is there a way we're all learning as we go together, team? Yes. <laughs> if I share my screen, right? Does it have to be my computer screen, or can it be my monitor? You should be able to share your monitor, your window, or any application. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what I can do. Okay, there's screen one, screen two, window, clip studio. That's interesting. Okay, so uh, I'll get started here first. Okay. Uh, I, I, I so for the first person, so when someone's fir first time opening uh, Clip Studio, their probably first thing's going to do is go to File New. So I'd see here that like every other processor, they have uh, presets for like Photoshop or GIMP will have like you know web dimensions. Like is this for mobile or web or web screen or like whatever. Uh, I see here uh, Clip Studio because it is you know designed originally as. Um, uh, manga creation and, and then it got right. westernized. Um, I see they have presets here for webtoons, comics, even fan scenes, which, uh, you know, if you were uh, shredding around escape parks in the late 90s, uh, well, even like late 80s through throughout the 90s, someone probably handed you their zine at some point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, 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 scene culture is like my favorite thing. Like, that was, that was so good. It's just like, hey, I saw you just like busted your knee on this pipe, but can you just like take my zine where I view like the latest like Black Fag album? <laughs> 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 it's like, great. Yeah, cool. Oh. Give me some ice, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so, do you use any of the presets uh, or, uh, um, I imagine, well, inking, you probably just like import the, the raw. Yeah, so, but... so when I ink, that's what I do. I import usually a TIFF file, preferably, just no. because of the amount of information that's on it. Um, but yeah, I'll just open down whatever the regular page is. I have used the comic page to like kind of lay things out. Sure. But I, I'm not that savvy with it. Okay. And I know my daughter actually has used the animating, uh, the, the animation part. Where you yeah. can like, uh, because I have the, you can have two different versions of, of clip. Basically, one is for like art stuff, and the other one you can actually add on the, the uh, animation. Interesting. Else. Okay. And so I, I didn't do it because I wanted to have it. I did it because I wanted to have the whole thing, in right. case there's anything I was missing. To be honest with you. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and then, um, well, my tell me if you're free to hop on in. <laughs> Then my daughter uh, on my iPad started using uh, the, like the animation part. And I had a, fr a friend, uh, his name is Ben Boston. I, to okay. I told her, I was like, hey, I can contact him to, to if he wanted to give you any pointers on it because he uses it a lot to make animatics. And she's like, oh, no, I'll figure it out. And she did. And like the matter of like two weeks, she figured out how to use Clip Studio and the animatics to create like uh, her animation stuff. Dang. Okay. That sounds like for animation, then it's pretty intuitive. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, but so you, do you do you mess around at all with doing a custom canvas, or just kind of leave that for if an artist feels like setting that up before you ink something, they can mess with that. But otherwise, you're gonna just import or use the, the, the only the... thing I change is uh, I want to make sure the sizes are correct. Like, if as an anchor, when I bring it into a new file, the first thing I do is go check the image size because sometimes the pages come in a little a little off, okay, and um, I set it up so that it's you know 11 by 17 and usually. I if if unless I don't, I don't remember because sometimes like I'm in the middle of just trying to like 
quickly get the page set up. Yeah. I forget, but usually I work uh, at 600 DPI. So okay. That, so that when I drop it back to 300 and turn it back into a TIFF file with my inks, um, the lines, I feel the lines are more crisp. Sure. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and actually pop. You haven't used... Oh, there you go. This actually works very well for what we're trying to do tonight. Uh, is there a better place to move our logo? We have a lower right. Hey, there you go. Perfect. So we'll be in the lower third and we'll have our, our demonstration up top here. Um, okay. There. Uh, multiple pages. Okay, so... Uh, so when you're working, you have the option to do multiple pages. I'm guessing that's if. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you ever actually do multiple pages in a project or? No. <clears throat> Funny enough, if I have to put a piece together myself and create a multiple page thing, I'll actually do it in Photoshop. Yeah. Just because I know it better. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm pretty, pretty savvy with, with clip, but like, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about it that doesn't, doesn't like come into the work that i do sure you know with it yeah uh and i don't know if the clip might have the same thing i imagine it might because there is more data involved in, in a visual file but uh, so the reason I... I think the reason you can set and change like say the number of pages uh -huh. when you set it up here is because it's gonna allow you to like open it up and be like you know page one and open it up like page two and three you know what right I mean? four and five yeah sure uh but yeah i was gonna say uh i I, uh, if I'm writing, uh, which is odd, but, but like scripting, it doesn't come as much, but I also, I hate working on big multi-page setups for writing, which if in the age of technology is kind of weird, but more so what I mean is, uh, like when you're, when I'm working, like right, scripting something like scripting 22 comic pages, I'm probably still writing like 33, like Microsoft Word or LibreOffice things, but, right. uh, working in novels, uh, uh, you're going to start like chunking away at like, uh, a couple hundred pages. And uh, what I found is that Microsoft Office and LibreOffice both have terrible memory leak issues where they will just like, once you get to a point, just trying to process or switch between like the sections thing, it's going to start chugging. Unless you yeah. are running a higher end PC, which thankfully I am, but like unlike your average work laptop, I'll suck butt. <laughs> um, so I like working, I like breaking it down in the chapter segments, which I imagine we kind of the equivalent of one page at a time as opposed to like, you know, working on 12 pages at a time. Right, man. There. Uh, uh, oh, they have uh, stuff for your your metadata, which I imagine. Uh, does anyone ever use this? Or <laughs> like I said, I use I use an entirely different aspect of it uh, sure. when I do inking. Yeah, perfect. All right. Uh, Sorry, so. sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry, sorry, watchers, viewers. <laughs> I, uh, uh, maybe uh, Tommy, if he's still in chat, he can answer if he wants to pop in. Uh, uh, but the um, I know for for most projects, I don't even bother with metadata for like any reason because like that's for the editor to slap onto like the finished product. <laughs> right. Yeah. But if you're doing it yourself, like if you're if you're using Clip to create your own comic. Sure. Um, you know what I mean? And yeah. it, you have the pages set up, you know, you're going to probably yeah. want it to like, like I said, that's story information. You're going to want yeah. the story name, your yeah. subtitle, who did it? You know, that's just I, getting that metadata embedded to um, now with the way uh, with, the, with the reworkings of DeviantArt's IP protection will probably also come in handy because now that is hard encoded on how they, they file everything. Right. So if you see something that same metadata pop up, but it's not your specific like blockchain identifier, you know that someone ripped your artwork off. That's kind of cool too. You can set it on a certain page. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if you can use it as an over as an overlay. Like so, you know how uh, any well, pretty Marvel and DC used to do, um, where they do like uh, the art, and then yeah. they would overlay the the letters like onto it according to like like say on a pillar. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, stuff like that. I wonder if that's possible. I haven't tried it. I should play around with it more. Sure. Okay. Well, so we got this here. We're gonna. Uh, press browse and choose a save folder to manage multiple pages. Interesting. What? Press. Pre save to F. Uh, oh, there you go. Just turn up multiple pages. There you go. All right. Look at that. Bleed. Perfect. There's okay. a bleed. There's a trim line. There's your live area. 
Yes. All right. So, uh, okay. Well, we'll get into the basics. Uh, I <laughs> Someone just got clips to do. They just figured out how to get past creating the new project. <laughs> uh, th I, I'm now live casting my first time experience using Clip Studio. <laughs> uh, all right. So, I'm proud of you, Tim. <laughs> perfect. Okay. So, uh, also, if you're trying to get into comics art, don't use a mouse and keyboard as your primary drawing tool. I'm just kind of, I'm just going to play that out there. Even as someone who does not draw, I'm going to put that out there and say maybe. I will, I will say I proved in class one time because I had left my Wacom tablet at home. Okay. I proved that I can color just as well with a mouse or with my trackpad as uh, some of my fellow classmates. With the trackpad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because I was already familiar with what we were yeah. doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I was like, oh yeah, let me, let me show you what I can do. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe at some point we'll transition to and pull in like a, an inked page that's not color. Oh, actually I do have a inked, inked Wolf Hunter pages that aren't colored yet. So maybe we can look into, uh, into like a, a live coloring demo or something mm -hmm. when we get through. So someone gets here, uh, they're going to start, they're, they're just trying to doodle, doodle around and get used to the software. Uh, what tool, tools do you recommend them checking it out or, or settings you recommend looking at at this point say that okay say it one more time okay so someone just got here they're just looking at kind of uh messing around another project and trying to get more familiar with it okay uh, uh with the software what kind of tools do you recommend looking at what settings do you recommend looking at so um, the first thing personally i would do would be like in regards to inks, right? I have to preface sure. with the fact that it's in regards to inks. So I will all my inks will already have had the pencils right. on the page, right? First thing I go into is I'm trying to click on your freaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that happened sometimes. I, was, I forgot. I forgot. I was watching a stream. Uh, I forgot. I was watching Day Nine play Command and Conquer. I had paused it, I came back down, and then I looked at the screen, and then like, I tried to unpause the game. Like, wait, I wasn't playing. I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, man, I wish I could pull this up. Maybe if I move Clip Studio. Because I have it open on one one screen. Sure. But I have to reset my Google to, to, to be able to switch it over. So that's not going to work. Anyway, so um, if there's artwork there, Right. Actually, pull up, pull up something. Pull up something like pencils. If you have any, pe any sure. like pencils at all. Uh, I don't know if I have any pencils. Let me actually. Let me drop my screen real quick here. I'll see what yeah. I can find. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'll, I'll close my eyes. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> I don't know what you got going on there. <laughs> oh, this could be atrocious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Pete so dirty. We're gonna do Pete so dirty on today's stream. <laughs> I think I have. I think I still have his pencils of his cover for Wolf Hunter. Oh, sweet. I'm going to send this to him after the stream. Like, look what I did. <laughs> look, what, look what he did. It was awesome. All right. And send me these on here. Do you send me over Instagram? Okay, send me over Instagram. Let me get over there. Here, there. Here, there, everywhere. Right. But also, if you're working in indie comics, uh, another uh, bit of, of uh, I guess, business promo there is get ready to like manage 15 different dm platforms oh geez yeah, I that, dude that's crazy um actually i can just connect oh yeah here we go we got the pencils all right we got the pencils all right uh open image a new tab save image as uh, there we go my those have some detail all right Okay, we're uh, going to uh, open downloads. Clinton pencils. Perfect. All right. Nice. <laughs> 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 oh, <Okay. laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> So the first thing from here, right? The first thing I do, I would do is go into, um, I think it's edit. Okay. And just go to change image resolution, just because I want to see, make sure it's, it's the right size. It's the right, see like that would be, sure. image would be 72 DPI, which isn't a lot. Right. Um, you want, ideally you want to work on at least bare minimum 300 DPI, only because 
your lines are going to be cleaner. You're going to, you know what I mean? It's gonna, there's a lot more dots per, was it DPI dots per inch? Pixels dots per, per inch. inch? Uh, it's DPI. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah. I think it's less French. Yeah, because it's the same thing. Like my my knowledge of DPI comes from uh, competitive <laughs> first person shooters, which it's the amount of pixels you can cover with a flick of your wrist over an inch. Right. So yeah. So that's French. And then that, and I usually change the unit to inches just so that I can see the size because I can't freaking make out. Now I would change that personally to eleven by seventeen. Okay. Should be able to change one. It'll change the other. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It scales. Cool. Yep. Hit OK. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so big! Yeah. Is it uh, is it control mouse wheel? Yes, it um, is. I don't have a mouse. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, it's just mouse wheel. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So from there, I think you can go to was it? Let me cancel it. I'm just using my iPad for reference. Sure, sure. Okay, it's layer properties. Layer. So go to window. Oh, window. Yep, go down the layer property. Layer property, okay. Okay, it says you already have it open, which I don't. Okay. Okay. Do you want it open or do you want it off? Oh, I open it. Yeah, keep it open. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So, oh, so you see we have it over here. Okay. Yep. So you click on color and it should allow you to change the color. Go to monochrome. Okay. And I think you. It's going to make me remember. Can I make me think? <laughs> We're taking Jose back to school at the same I know. time. <laughs> All right, monochrome. Cause I have, I already have mine preset. Oh yeah, uh, that's also the thing is once you get into yeah. like working with like your your favorite tools, you get some really like you, for a new people for a new person they probably look really funky, but okay. you do get some really interesting presets for stuff. Control Z for that. Control Z. Yeah. All right. All right. Click on. The two layer, the the gray layer. No, no, not on color. Up just above it, all, all the way to the to the right. That that one right there. Okay. Click on that. There you go. Okay. So the first thing I do is I click on that. Like I said, it's normally like it's just a quick button for me. You know what oh I mean? yeah, yeah. I click, click do it. So I have like making me have to think through this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, that's that's uh, was it the 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 role of mastery is like the more you can teach something, the better you retain it yourself. <laughs> so <laughs> so. This is what we call blue line, right? From this point, you can do one of two things. Like uh, you can print it off at this point if you have a, a large format printer onto sure. Bristol and ink it by hand. The blue is considered a non-photo blue so that if you print it out, you ink it with black, anything that's blue should not reproduce when they go to print the page. Yeah, so just take okay. it into your local Kinko's. Right. Yeah. Um, but... Don't make them, don't let them make you scan it on your own. Mm. So I've taken my stuff into Staples and Staples scanners aren't bad. They're, yeah. they're fine, but they only go up to, I think it's like 150 or 200 DPI. They tell you mm. it's 300, but it's not. Yeah. Like I make them go, take it to the back and, and scan it for me. And they're like, sure. oh, you know, the ones out here is like, listen, dude, like I've been through this already. Yeah. Like, just take it back there. 600 DPI. It's, it's, it's the, the Ron Swanson that uh, I know more than <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know what I'm about, son. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do it digitally from this point, then you can start using the brush tool, which is to uh, the left, just above the pencil. Not brush tool. I'm sorry. Pen tool. Pen tool. Okay. Yeah. Brush tool is cool. It's got some cool stuff you can add after you've gotten your line art done. Sure. Right. And then you pick your size. I usually keep it about 10 or so, but somewhere between seven and 10 personally. Okay. Right. Sure. Sure. Okay. So already at 10. Yep. This is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With your mouse and mind you using a, a pen tablet or, you know, either using a Wacom or, or a Apple or a surface. Um, oh, yeah. you can, the, their tips are sensitive mm -hmm. so if anybody who doesn't know this already um, you can vary your line weight by how thin and thick you make your your lines across across the papers so like if you look on this dude's shoulder you know what i mean the, the towards the top right you know i mean you can it's kind of fade and trailing it there yes see yeah. that's that is a created line weight which the line weight helps to create a little more depth and like organic to, organicness to it yeah 
Otherwise, everything would be the same line. It looked like an old coloring book or Justice League or sorry. Yeah, Justice League cartoon from the 80s. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. And then come on, come on, Tim. Let's let's see you ink this bad boy. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely taking screenshots of this, by the way. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm on blue ink. Oh yeah, you're still on blue. So right. okay. Okay. Sorry. This is my bad. Go to your layer. All right. All right. Create a new uh vector layer. Okay. Is some there... people some people do it in rat so the the no no click out of that. Okay. Okay, where your layer is right now. Just above it are a bunch of little, yeah. little tools, right? The one to the left with the plus, that is a raster rasterized okay. layer, right? That's what you use for coloring when you want to like blend colors and stuff like that on there. Sure. The next one over is a vector layer. That one, okay. when you create lines on it, um, you can create lines and you take your uh, select tool and you select it. It'll show you the vectored lines across the path. Okay. okay. That line, if you use that, and that you now try and make a line anywhere just just to make sure it's does. Yep, there you go. Okay. So you would do it on a separate layer, lock out your your blue line because you don't want to actually switch. I've done that. Yeah. So click uh, on your click on your Clinton pencils. There you go. And do a no, nope, you can't do it like Photoshop. Yeah. Click on there and then there's a lock just above the vector line button. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Now, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I, in regards to like the tool, tool properties on the right, I'm sorry, on the left. Sure. I usually take my stabilization. If I want a line to be nice and clean and, and solid, or not solid, but like, you know, anybody's hand is going to have a little jumpiness to it, right? Yeah. yeah. That helps to take that out, right? Okay. I usually take stabilization all the way up, especially when I do my starting my starting lines. Okay. Sure. Now you can have fun. Perfect. Now your line should be a little cleaner, even though they're they're with uh, usually oh, yeah. will seem so jumpy. Perfect. This is like <laughs> yeah. outstanding so scuffed but yeah we're, we're this, getting there this is more fun than the oscars <laughs> get my spy's name out of your mouth <laughs> we have fun here that's right oh yeah all right so that's so that's that's our starting line there that's that, starting line that that squiggly little <laughs> right so nice. let's see if I can. Okay. So I have. I don't know if this will work. Let me, because I have. A, I'll use a different picture because I don't have that one. Okay. Let me see. It might not still let me do it. Sharing. Okay, I got that. Okay. One, two. One, two. No, wrong time. I think I'll have to do it like this. Now you're gonna have to tell me if uh, if it switched over to my clip. Okay, I'm not seeing it yet. It's the entire screen. Oh, it's still going through preferences. Weird. Never mind. It won't let me do it. Okay. The universe hates me, Tim. Or at least stream yards. <laughs> right. Or yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's good. They're making sure you're not, you know what I mean? Just keeping you on your checks and balances and stuff like that. Sure. So because you used a mouse, your line is the full 10 pixels right. or whatever it is, right? Um, From that point, I would go down. Personally, I, I would take it down. But like I said, I get I get pressure sensitivity on my, on my pins. Right, right. Because then if you want, the, the smaller it is, the smaller line you have. Personally, like especially if you're using the mouse. Oh yeah. Which obviously is a whole different bird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Yeah, as, as you said, probably not recommended if you're just starting out with a. <laughs> I actually knew a guy who who inked with a mouse. Like his first works he did was inking with a mouse. Wow. And uh, uh, once he got a, a Wacom tablet, he's like, "Oh, this is so much different." I was like, "Yeah, dude." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like your work's gonna come out a lot cleaner, a lot better. This is so good. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, this is something. It's certainly something. All right. You have to have a whole new career change now. Tim. Perfect. Yeah, I kind of got a little <laughs> of this stippling there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, that was that was not on. That, that, that was that was not on target. That's not on target. <laughs> um. So let's see. I have to remember how I did this too. There are ways I wouldn't recommend it just because like there's inconsistencies. Sure. But if you, okay, so go to on your toolbar. Okay. Okay. Wait one second here. I'm getting a bunch. I have like 50 windows open right now. Holy cow. How do you, I don't know how you function like that. It goes down. It goes down. Well, the problem is like they're all actively used to you know, in managing oh, various wow. things I've got right now. All right, all right. So we're we're changing something. Okay, just changing the tool. Okay. Uh, you're gonna go to the line tool, which is just under the gradient on the bottom section. There you go. Sure. Now you're gonna click on the curve. Okay. Okay. You keep everything pretty much the same, sure. and then go to the the crease of where his spine is okay yeah yeah okay and click there and then you can like you don't have to click and hold you i believe you can just click and then move it down to the bottom and then click again okay. and then hold the second click and then slide down with your mouse you okay oh, that, all right yeah try grabbing a hold of the line and why is it not curving it's supposed to curve there you go. Uh, okay. Okay. I see. I see. All right. So let's double and oh well. Oh. Yeah, get like <laughs> double and double and do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go to like it ends about there. Yep. Oh, is that that is wonky. Go the other way. <laughs> yeah, when it out. Try something else. Bye. Hey. Are you clicking and holding the click? Yeah. Here. Here, man. Now you're going to make me use my trackpad. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. So that works. Okay. So actually, it wants me to hold this part and then release. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And then you can just kind of like adjust it from there. Okay. Right. That's so much cleaner. <laughs> 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 the problem with that is yeah. using using the mouse you would have to do that and then click on the same starting point and move the line over and then like say raise it just above and then put the curve on it in order to create that line weight for the back right I mean, but for like just getting curves down like it's not too bad we had to kind of use the same principle when uh in uh illustrator in uh, doing uh, uh, typography. Okay. Yeah. For our audio listeners, I'm sure this is like the weirdest episode. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just so you guys know, audio listeners. Tim is inking in a uh, cover done by Peter Clinton using a mouse <laughs> with Clip Studio. All right. So for that, I probably want like a, a thicker line weight. And is is there a way to change it after you put it down, or do you need to? No. Well, I don't know honestly. Okay. Let's find so out. Learning progress. Perfect. Okay. It's a little too thick. Yeah. 
somewhere between there, maybe. There we go. That, that feels about right. I don't think so. But like what I said, uh, if you want to like give it the illusion of thickness, you would just, like I said, click on the starting point again and you know what I mean? Click on the starting point, click on your ending point, and then drag it out away. Like that, exactly like that, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, the illusion of thickness is my uh, DJ name. That's right. Yeah. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, this is coming out. I mean, that, that, is, that is the thing, is if... Uh, if you uh, if you are, are forced to work with a, a mouse and keyboard, you can you use the tools provided to try and cheat your way into getting something that works together. That's right. So you can use computer assisted uh, lines there. There you go. <laughs> Tim, you're doing so right. well. I'm not so, getting the job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we if we uh, get to the point where we're hiring me to to ink a comic with mouse and keyboard, I think we're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> so obviously we've created a gap there. So do we do we care about that or do we try to fill that or just kind of yeah, let that it, ride? Fill it in. Uh, okay. You can take the pen tool, uh, take your pen down to like a four or five probably. Okay. And then just slowly fill it in, like zoom in and fill it in. Perfectly not with white. <laughs> Perfect. Just, just white it all out. Uh, interesting. Just to so go double there. click on, yeah, double click on that. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Take it all the way down. Like uh, with Clip Studio, you can set your colors to be different, um, different color. Um, swatches i guess like there's no word okay it. um your color palette yes you can change it to color palettes my color palette oddly enough is uh set to copic markers huh so that all my colors because I, I use my copic so often like those are the colors i, I go by when i like compare things right yeah. so i set it up to be copic markers so that i can see what i'm what i got and it's exactly what i'm looking for you know what i mean yeah yeah I think we've gone a little too deep on the filling in with that. But. So you can actually fix that without even like doing it just by uh, going to the curve line again. Uh, okay. Right? Uh, do, do, do. Sure. Zoom in a little bit. Now on the right, so you see where you filled in a little bit. Yeah. The, the spot to the right, the, like the corner to the right of the top most of where you just filled in. Click on that and then take it up just a little bit. Like where your screen is right now, take it. Just a little higher. Okay. And then you want to cross into the line that you have, that you already have there. Right? Like that. Yeah. That's okay. Awesome. And then curve it to the left. Just a, like, just a little bit. There you go. Now you've, you just need to fill it in and you create okay. a, a shadow where, uh, uh, okay. where the, um, was it the hinge point for the fabric? Sure. Even though I'm using a mouse and keyboard, I find myself doing the same thing you need to do with like a. If if you're just dueling with a pencil, you just kind of do like the little like scratchy lines, just doing like tiny little small strokes. Yeah. I think I do that with my with my tablet. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's more so I do that with, uh, with painting. You do that to, to with painting. It, it it makes more sense because you're you're each time you're doing less paint at the end, right. but each time so you're just kind of like easing it through. So there are brush tools on here, right? Um, yeah. That simulate watercolor. Okay. You can simulate watercolor. You can simulate um, acrylics. You can simulate. Um, uh, let's see. Watery brush, maybe. That's a good one. And then just pick a okay. color. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fabric would probably be. No, just brush across anywhere. All right. Does it not do anything? Not sure. Oh. 
you might have to open a separate layer. It uh, might only allow for vector line. So uh, don't do a vector line. Do a rasterized. Okay. There you go. Now try it. Hmm. Awkward. Huh. Making me That's... look like a fool. Now I gotta look at it. Right. You're not gonna make me look like a fool. I kind of sort of know what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, is it perhaps really dark? Watery brush. Hmm. And let's do that is weird. Oh, maybe it's just the brush. It doesn't like that one, but it likes yeah. round watercolor. Interesting. Yeah. Imagine, well, yeah, you just want to be equivalent of pot dipping your subject, or you just. Okay, let's see. All right, okay. there we go. So, like, I don't know if it'll do it because, like I said, because of the trackpad, but or your uh, mouse, but so that layers the way you would layer with watercolor, right? Right, right, yeah. Then there should be a watercolor blender somewhere in there amongst all your brushes. Uh, our flats. Textured Slide. blender. Where? Where is that? Maybe it's one I have that I you don't. Um, watercolor brush. It might be okay. So funny enough, I've downloaded so many brushes. I'm not quite sure what all I have. <laughs> what's default and what's your own? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's another thing we may get into in the last half is uh, is where you go to to find find uh, extra tools or add-ins. Um, so that, that one, it's pretty easy actually. Um, with Clip Studio, you have to went so like when you even if you have the free one, I, I believe you can do it with the free one. But uh, when you when you buy it, you have to log in, right? You have to create a yeah, login yeah. for it. And the login that you have, there's a little squiggly icon okay, up there on, where your uh, pages are. You know, if you if you look at your page tabs, right? Where it says comic, go down, just a little right there, yep. to the right, right there. Okay. Click on that. That takes you to the different like options of what you can do. Okay, I have that open on a different one, I believe. Let me. Let me see if it'll just open up that tab. Perfect. It's in here. Okay. Yeah, let's go back to that tab. So let me change what I'm sharing real quick here. Yeah, no worries. There you go. I'm just gonna share a modern one. There you go. All right. So we have our 30 day studio. Right. Uh, so what I usually click on is devices I should Clip Studio Assets. Find brushes and more. And that's gonna open up a web browser. At least it does for me. I think it's thinking about it. Right. Okay. There you go. Well, in the search, you just type in let's let's say uh, cross hatching. It's going to give you all kinds of different brushes that you can download. Okay. For cross hatching, uh, the free ones, as long as you have Clip Studio and as long as you have a login, you can download the free ones all day long. Perfect. Uh, the other ones are, I think, <laughs> and actually good cross hatch. Uh, they actually cost money. Sure but it's that. not like real money. It's Clip Studio money. It's like cashing in Xbox points. Huh. You know what I mean? You use money to buy Xbox points or whatever, and then right. you use the points to pay for whatever you have. Interesting. Same, Imagine, same principle. Yeah. Interesting. Just using uh, some sort of uh, payment processor so it protects your information probably. Yep. All right. Uh, so I've never actually got bought any of any of the ones that cost points. I sure. usually just get the free. There's there's so many of the free ones. Uh, you can even type in, uh, let's say, uh, oil we're paint. gonna we're gonna go for an, an actually good. We're gonna <laughs> 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 sure download. This material has been downloaded. Uh, so nice, cool. All right. Okay, now you right. should. Go back to, let's see, 
yeah, go there. And there's a. I imagine they're probably actually in the in the documentation explained where to. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, though, who really reads the? Manual. Yeah, well, that's that's that's, that's the the manual the uh, the favorite phrase of uh, uh, of everyone who who does anything in IT is uh, 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 RTFD read the documentation. Right. <laughs> so there's a uh, there should be under on the right side of your tools material or a thing called material. Let's see, where's that? It's a one of those folders that you have. So you see where your navigator window is? Sure. Just to the left of that are like three icons that have folder material. Oh, material. The go down to Dang. download. Yeah, there you go. All right. Now that's just so you know where it's at, right? Right. So what you do is you come over here to your pin tool, click on your pin tool. And then, yeah. Okay, scroll to the bottom. Here, add sub tool. Yep. Click and on that. There. Add palette. It's processing. Yep. There you there go. go. So we got that. Uh, let's get off of uh, creating our puce colored. Go <laughs> ahead and sure. Good old zero zero. Ooh. And then using under uh, tool properties, you can change like the opacity. You can change uh, how 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 much you you know what you can change. Also, you can change what what you have in pin tools, like where your options you are. You have in sure. pin tools by clicking on the little wrench. So this with the, everything with the little uh, eye on it is what's displayed under your tool property section, right? Okay. So then you can go to ink, like click on ink. Has your opacity, has your blending mode, has your color mixing. You can click on uh, was it color jitter. Like go down to the list and just click on anything. Sure. Really. Anti-aliasing. Right. Brush shape. That's go to brush tip. Okay, click on uh, the blank square in front of the arrow on thickness. Okay. Now you see how thickness appeared over on your yeah tool yeah body? okay and then now you can okay. hit X top right and it'll be there so you can change thickness of it and that okay. changes like, you can see it in the yeah. sample window up there exactly interesting all right so that those are the things I use when I use my pen tool um. Like I will change sometimes change the opacity. You can change like the angle of it. So in in Photoshop, you would open up brush properties and you can change the angle, like the depth and width of the uh, of the brush. Right. That's sure. basically the same principle. Only I feel it doesn't show you what it's doing until you actually try and like use it, okay. which is which to me is kind of a flaw. Right. I, I like to see the angle and the you know the the ovular shape I ha I've picked out before I try and use it because then it's just if I messed up I just gotta back up and do it again but like that's that's still seconds of my time. So that one has yeah. so this one is basically it's it does the cross hatching for you right You're right right. There's another, I mean, obviously there's tons of, of different brushes. Like you, you can literally spend an entire afternoon just going through the brushes. That's, that's how many there are. Like probably even more than that. Sure. But like I had to set a timer for myself, truly. You know, I want to look, <laughs> look for a new brush to use on this. Like I know what I want. I can't quite like emulate it with the brushes I have. I want to try it on something, try it and find one that works better. Set a timer. I'm giving right. myself 30 minutes. Otherwise you will fall down that rabbit hole looking at everything. But oh, I, like, yeah. I think there's a, a hatching one. I think it's maybe it's hatching is what I have. Okay. Um, but like, yeah, like, let's see if I can show you from here. Like, here, not me. Uh, there you go. go yeah. Way, right. Yeah. And because uh, I break everything. <laughs> yeah. 
that's like a list of the brushes that I have, right? It's quite quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> but I use them for different things. Like I wanted to yeah. create uh, almost like a semblance of like a watercolor with grace, like doing almost like a uh, um. I because I told I think I believe I told you before I like doing inking traditionally. Sure. And I I like using ink wash. You know what I mean? I like. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was trying to find brushes to try to give me that same that same like consistency digitally. So that's why I got a ton of different brushes. But uh, one of the ones I have is like, a, I have a rain brush. So you want to draw those Batman ones digitally. I click on my rain brush and I just run across my screen and it, it'll show, and I can change the direction of it. So it kind of looks like it's raining. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, that, I have grass because I didn't want to do grass one time. I was so bored. Oh, actually, funny enough, I used it on, uh, um, was it a uh, Kalis? Oh, nice. When I did the Christmas special. There was a scene where there was grass on part of the part of the page, and so I used that to just hurry up and like brush it on, and then sure. and then obviously I don't just leave it like that. I go in there and tweak it up a little bit so yeah. that you know what I mean. It's it's not just the pattern. So so out of my own curiosity here, uh, more so just to see how truly lazy you can get with things. I'm just gonna see if they if, with looking at the facial hair on on Tizard there. <laughs> okay. If they have uh, you know. Just a bunch of face posing things. It looks like. I just tried to scroll through your list. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Yeah, if you notice, like uh, some of the things, there's a uh, 3D modeling. There you go. That can be done on Clip Studio for people. Yeah. That, like they they can take a figure, fit fiddle it, and manipulate it into the shape that they want, and then create a, a second layer and then outline it. Like that's that's, I mean. I've Perfect. not actually used anybody use it. I don't think, but it's possible. Yeah. So we got we got we got a a tool here that seems to be designed for body hair, body hair, body <laughs> official hair. There you go. Yeah, so they, they tell you that they'll not do the hair job for you. So even if you're lazy, you can't be too lazy with it. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So so really a brush. Okay. Yeah. So that one you would have to open up your brush tool. And then go down, yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah, you have to be mindful of uh of what tool it is because I I downloaded one that was a really I thought it was a really cool tool. Um, and it turned out it was an eraser. Oh. I was like, oh, that is not what I want. That guy is does not have a clean clean uh mustache yeah, even then it looks like it's not adjusting the actual brush size too much when i'm clicking through there i need we were just changing the density or you can do like you did with the back the back uh folds the uh hinge point oh yeah where you did the curve tool you can use that it would be a lot cleaner but you would have to like line things up a little more Sure. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, thankfully, Clip, or Pete's pretty good about like his hairs are always clean. Like even even like when they're yeah. like lopped over and whatnot, it's a it's a uh, an organized lop. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how I managed to do it, get you, to do that. You kept the uh, the two points really close together. Looks like a less squiggly Wario. Yeah, <laughs> gotta get that. We went from like the 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 the, the kind of hatched realistic mustache to uh, Nintendo there. Right. Yeah. And then, and then uh, let's see if we. Yeah, I think there was a thing where I, I couldn't know. share on my iPad for some reason. I don't remember what it was. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. 
Why do I have that vile, evil TikTok on my iPad? <laughs> There. Oh man, the brush is broken already. Perfect. I did something to it. So about how often do you find yourself using the undo tool? A lot, actually. Okay. Um, so I originally I started doing it because a lot because I was using it in uh, Illustrator and I just kind of got into the habit of like, if I don't, a line isn't what I like, I'm a, slightly a perfectionist when it comes to like doing the correct lines. Right? Sure, sure. Um, I'm going to attempt just to see what it says to log it into my, on my uh, iPad. Sure. I don't think it'll let me, but we'll see. Nope, we have, we have something there. Yeah, but now I have to see if I can share my screen. And mute my mic. Okay. Would uh would you add him in or add my iPad in for just a yes. quick second to see if I can share if it gives me the option to share my screen? We have we have now turned the esteemed Doctor Wizard and Doctor Tizard into uh, Wario. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's see. Don't mind us. It's people we're trying to learn stuff today oh yeah oh that's my hat <laughs> so i don't think i can I can share my screen. It's not giving me an option. Interesting. Yeah. It's all about multiple devices. If you're working with a... Uh reference or anything like that do, do you have that like set up on your computer while you're on your tablet or so using two monitors or, or actually yeah if i'm using it on my tablet i'll open up my reference on my my extra screen sure while i work for whatever i'm doing on on my other screens um but if i'm out and about i'll i'll take a screenshot of whatever my reference is and i'll i'll pull the uh a pane or a panel or whatever sure or not a panel um what's the word I'll pull the image up, import the image into the page I'm working on, okay. so, and, and just leave it hanging there you right. know, as a separate layer, so I can use that as a reference. And sometimes I'll even like uh, opaque it, yeah, yeah, just so I can see through it. But uh, I usually only do that like. Um, 
I've done it when I want to keep like, a, so if I'm coloring something in Photoshop, I want to use a particular color scheme that I, I saw on something that I like, and I want to use that color scheme on what I'm doing. Um, I'll keep an image up there and there's actually a way, I don't know if there's a way in clip because I've never tried it, but there's actually a way to like take that image and create a color palette according to the image that colors that are in, in that image. Go through, I'm going to use this little bit of time here at the end to see how well I can do that service revolver. <laughs> that should work pretty good if you use the line tool. Yeah. There you go. Did, did that. some, uh, yeah, different dimensions around that on the actual, uh, on the uh, chamber because. Uh, Otherwise, the curve yeah. is not is exactly not right. Yeah. Okay, so now if you have it lined up, you know, you're, you're obviously your lineup is a little off, right? Right, yeah. Uh, so zoom in a little bit in that spot. Go to your, in your tools, there's a box that has like a little arrow. All the way on the left. Okay, uh, there. Up towards the top. Nope. Ah, okay. All right, now you want to make sure it's on object. Now, come down to your bottom line and just click on it. Okay. Oh, okay. You, you, oh, I'm in the I'm in the wrong layer. Yeah. Right, we're gonna go ahead and you don't need that. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do that again. I'm going to replicate perfectly 100% because I'm a professional. That's right. I think they actually came out better. <laughs> right then. <laughs> so, just for reference sake, go ahead and go there. Click yeah. on the bottom line again. Okay. Now, it'll that will allow you to grab a hold of the pinpoint and move it. Okay. So, you can move it, line it up a little better. So, if need be, you can, you can change where like, exactly. Yeah, tweak it up a little bit. Yeah. That was weird watching that happen from two screens. <laughs> <laughs> now, click on your eraser. There should be a double a double uh, water droplet. It's right above that. A little go down. Oh, there, there it is. is. Yep. All right. Okay. Cool. Click on the vector one. Ooh. Uh. Vector. Okay. There you go. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so now go back to the curve, right? And you're going to create a curve that crosses at two points the curves that you already have. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just like go, go in the other way. You just want it to cross. Okay, so. No, no, no. Go, go a little to the right. Okay. Yeah. And you, don't, you, don't need, you want the curve to cross into the curve that you have. Okay. With no no, <laughs> Con command or control Z. Yep. With your curve tool, you okay. Click on the curve tool, and then create a curve that crosses in. Yeah, like that. Okay. Okay. Now, and it doesn't matter where you where you start. Sure. Okay. Now, click on your your our eraser. Yep. Now, there's that line has uh, one side of it on one side of the curve and one side on the other, right? Yeah. Right. Just draw a line through one of those curves. Okay. Okay, so doing that, because it's on a vector layer, you're erasing just up to an intersecting vector line. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the feathering that I do, you know, using, because I'm like with the Apple Pencil, I can create a uh, line weight and create a feathering. So it starts out skinny and it gets wide at the base, right? Right. And I'll do a bunch of lines like that. I'll cross over the line that I've been working on. 
and then I'll take the eraser and just run down one side. It's like taking an exacto knife and just trimming off the edge. Sure. Okay. So that it doesn't. I do that because I want my my line to look like it came across and got fat and stayed that way. If I did it and stopped, sometimes you get like an ovular line at the end where the brush stops. Right, right. I don't I don't want that line, so I'll go all the way through the lines and then erase what I uh, the side I don't use. Okay. Just a little, little movie magic there. Sure. Like that's what works easily for me. Yeah. So if you're going back up to like where we kind of like stippled on like the to, to not have like show it wasn't like a solid crease there. So you if could, it was a solid line there and you yeah. did, you crossed with the vector eraser, it would erase the entire line because there is no intersecting line. Right. But with but, any of the other erasers, you can do that. Like the hard eraser, you can do it. Or sure. over here on the eraser pr tool properties, there's where it says vector eraser and it has those little T's. If you no. uncheck that, not no, not that one. All the way on the left side, by the plus. Oh, okay. If you uncheck that, then you can cross and not uh, erase all the lines. Okay. Yeah. So I really only ever use one eraser unless I'm using like um, like gray tones, like an ink wash kind of thing. Then I'll go up and I'll use the kneaded eraser sure, because sure. it has a really nice like a uh, um, like a value of how he races almost like it does it like opacity layers you know what i mean yeah so like as long as like you can change the opacity of that down too so it erases just a little bit so if you want your lines to be subtle you can right. you can do that see yeah And now that line is more of a grayish line, not, not as hard. So like right. you, wanted to, you wanted to make sure you had lines across something, you know what I mean? But you didn't want them to be like a hard line. You can do that to like soften it up a little bit. Perfect. The only problem with that is if you do that, sometimes when they color it, um, if they're using, if, if that line is like a hard line, like the uh, where the shoulder uh, stitching is, right? That's right. a hard, that's a hard line where, you know, where you know that there's a crease there in regards mm -hmm. to the line art um you'd be able to see the colors if they if they break the colors there okay you know what i mean yeah yeah but normally if you're doing it like for like the creases and stuff like that like they're like across the middle of the back you can actually do that and so when they go over with a color it's going to create a, like a little darker color there so it just mm. it kind of like because it adds that gray it, it's gonna sometimes it makes it pop sometimes it doesn't like it, it's a hit or miss sure thing Okay, well, we're coming up to our, our last little bit here. So are there any uh, last minute tools or, or things that people must know or, or must use or be aware of? Um, uh, I would definitely say know your pen tools, know your pencil tools. Your pencil tool is a great tool in here. Um, and because it's it's softer. Like here it's, it's a little, yeah. because it's on a vector line layer, actually even, even regardless of vector layer, um, it's a harder pencil. Like I usually, funny enough, I can actually I do it a pencil like line art and rough it out because I think I, we were, I used to rough out uh, pages in school in okay. Clip Studio and then print it out at eleven by seventeen and then do the pencils on that. Or you know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Like I know other people that do it that way as well, but they're more savvy with like penciling. I'm not very good at penciling digitally just because i think the space variance is different to me okay but yeah know your colors no or not colors know your pen tools like try all of them like they're if you get time they all do something different i mean uh some things work on certain layers some things don't um i don't think the your your uh, fill tool nice your fill tool does not work on uh in a vector layer like i've not gotten it to work. right yeah, like it's easy to with me like the, yeah. the red. Yeah, that took me a while. Uh, there's a guy I know, uh, Dorian, is his first name. I don't remember his last name. And okay. I was hanging out. We were hanging out on groups uh, with Afua Richardson, and he did a Clip Studio tutorial for us for some of the stuff that we don't use. And most of what he did was like uh, Clip Studio paintings. Okay. But a lot of the stuff, I didn't know that you couldn't use a fill tool. I just thought mine was broken until he explained <laughs> it to me. I was like, oh. Okay, well, I don't feel so bad. 
All right, so you get, get to know that your your clip studio is not broken. It's it's just uh, it's me. I'm up. broken. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah, um, it's really just trial and error. Like I I for the longest time, like while I was in school, I used to tell my friends and my friend Kyle, don't Kyle, don't watch this. Yeah. That uh, I hate a clip studio and it's it was crap and I just I don't like it. I won't ever use it. You can't make me. Sure. All the digital inks I do now are clip studio. <laughs> of course, yeah. That's the way it goes. Right. So I said it's mostly trial and error. Uh, like I said, my daughter learned how to uh, animate on it, just taking it in an afternoon. She didn't even watch tutorials, she just did it herself. Wow. Yeah. I'm so proud of her. She's smarter that, than I am. That is dope. So if the if someone does want to uh, you know engage in the YouTube tutorials as uh, uh, the, the school of YouTube is free. Um, the, so yeah, YouTube is free, and there are lots of people on there who are more than happy to explain it. And actually, some of them will get back to you on the message boards, uh, okay. like on the chat for that their particular thing. Um, if there's some, if you wanted to ask a question about something, um, if you would prefer to pay for your tutorials and education, there is a site called Linda. Yes. Dot com. I think L L Y N D A, I believe. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, and that's a subscription based thing. You can you pay for the subscription. It's a little pricey depending on what ask ink or like avenue you go. Mm -hmm. But if you pay like the full price subscription to get the exercises, um, they will send you the files that they're using in the videos that they're teaching you. They'll send you the files so that you can do the same thing and practice with it for its money, for the money you're paying. It's a really, really great. Uh, I don't even think, I think it's a program, right? Or, yeah, uh, an application. It, yeah, it's a, a it's a website, but I believe they also do have an application that you can yeah. install. So, but they have like every they have Clip Studio in there. They got Photoshop, Illustrator, all the Adobe uh, stuff. They have um, Maya. They have ZBrush. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many other. They also have other stuff programs. for. Um... This illustrators um, specifically for lettering. That's uh, what I ended up doing was a, a, a course on there from the, one of the co-founders of Kablam. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I used I used uh, learning how to do Illustrator. I kind of so funny story. I learned how to illustrate or I learned how to ink digitally on Illustrator um, from Apua Richardson, and she taught me over AOL Instant Messenger. Nice. Like that, that's how I learned how to how to digitally ink. Then I started doing uh, the Linda classes because I went to Full Sail. Uh, yeah. I took online classes at Full Sail, and yeah. Linda was part of my my school program. Yeah, I so, got Linda through uh, Full Sail as well. That was probably one of the best parts of uh, <laughs> it, what the tuition it, covered. It really was. Yeah. Like that thing was magic, and um, like I even told, like I said, I, I'm talking about it now. Like I haven't used it in years, but like it's still it's such a great tool that like. It needs to be mentioned, but um, but then it's just like trial and error on my own. Like after that, after I watched and watched it, went through the tutorials on Linda, um, I just started working on my own and just learning new things. And I learned I learned quite a bit in uh, Cuber School as well. Sure, um, our, our teacher Max taught us things when he was teaching us topography and Illustrator, and several of my classmates. They, it, it it really is a different bird. Mm -hmm. That if you uh if you don't have the patience to like try and work with it, then, you know, it's going to take you a while to, to get it. It really will. Sure. Like the principle of illustrator is different, the pr just like the principle for clip studio. It's right. different, but I feel clip studio for as much as I say, I don't like it. <laughs> it gives you a really, like it makes it really easy. I mean, the options you can use and that you can do, like the different brush tools and tips or brush tools and properties and sizes right. and brush options that you have are like just, there's so many and like so many you can work with that You can do like really work some pretty cool magic with it. But uh, like YouTube is like, you know, back to that. YouTube is definitely like, if you don't for, you know, for what you're paying, you know what I mean? YouTube is still yeah. pretty good. If you don't have the, if you don't have the ability to get Linda, you know what right. I mean? But yeah, you went to you went to full sale. I forgot. Oh about yeah, that. yeah, yep. Yeah. So I met uh, Roland. <laughs> right, that would have been cool. Imagine meeting Roland when I went to full sale. Please, <laughs> definitely. 
yeah, that was uh, it's definitely uh, definitely definitely one of the pricier skills out there, but uh, definitely grateful I got the opportunity to do yeah. so. Yeah. Don't don't tell Roland my daughter wants to go to Ringling. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I had um, interesting enough. Actually, uh, I had a couple uh, people who I, I knew from over here who uh, ended up going to SCAD, which is, you know, kind, kind of familiar. What, what do I know? Uh, it's the uh, Savannah College of Arts and Design. So okay, yeah, they do a lot of like um, they're considered to be like really high up there for. Uh, new media digital media and 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 working in, in digital art um uh but uh it's kind of a rival school to full sale given the curriculum and how close it is oh <laughs> so that's, yeah so like hatfield and mccoys exactly or uh the jets and the sharks yeah or uh the the jets and the giants <laughs> there, yeah Alrighty. So that has been me messing around uh, with uh, Clip Studio while Jose uh, teaches me the basics. And hopefully, if you've been watching along, you you know know your way around the platform a little bit better and, and know how to at least get started and start messing around with some tools. And if, if you're using you know, a tablet or something, your audience probably came out a little better than mine did. But uh, I mean, for does... using a mouse, that's not <laughs> too shabby. Yeah, this this one could do some work here. But once you get into the actually using the that also does some that does say something about um uh the the vectoring algorithm that they use the fact that you can use their their vector, their vector assisted uh tools there and with the mouse right. and keyboard still get something that resembles the shape of hair <laughs> right yeah so also one of the things that you remember i was talking about um the curve tool and erasing just one side of the curve when i do feathering yeah yeah um if i want to have like a nice point like for the hair or something that has a nice point on it yeah. I will draw a line, extend past it, draw the other line, extend past it. And like, as long as I like angle it just right, I can right. erase at the intersection, the two, the two crossing points and it gives me a nice peak. Okay. Yeah. So if you're, uh, Oh, go. It's like, we want to get like this really sharp. I, I might just, you know, do, there then something there and then an easy erase tool make sure yeah okay there you go yep. nice yeah it's a, like i would personally that's what i would do uh when doing the flag you know what i mean oh yeah if yeah i want to get those nice clean points uh, nice little corner the flag, there yeah for sure Helps if you're on the line. Let's, let's get our boy a little thicky. And you know that uh, if you hold on the shift, I think it's the shift button, your line will stay straight. Okay, so that's uh, that, that's like photo, Photoshop where it does the. Yes. Okay, nice. Okay. You can do, I think it does. Uh, Horizontal, perpendicular, and 45 degrees, I think. Oh, okay, nice. And there you Damn, go. look at that. Nice. Nice and crisp. Right? Nice, clean, crisp points and whatnot. Like for anything like really mechanical, which is funny because I don't I don't use it for that for any crisp and clean lines on obsoletes. Because okay. the city that um obsolete is taking place at um it's meant to look very organic and right. when, when aaron drew it he's like hey that's what i did i got a lot of curved lines a lot of organic lines in there i was like okay i'm just letting you know that's how i'm inking it in that because i i looked at that and i was like okay this is yeah. a very almost like magically manipulated from the ground and like curved lines and doorways and whatnot so like he's like yeah that's exactly what i was doing i was like great <laughs> perfect all right so uh yeah that's been that's been our show and hopefully um you, if you're watching, you you now know your way around uh, Cup Studio. You know how to get your tool set up, uh, how to get started, and, and start messing around with it. 
yeah, I mean, with most things, like really anything art related, I always say that's a game of hours. Um, it really is. Yeah, but uh, it's a how long, how long had uh, you messed around with Scope Studio before you felt comfortable with it? Um, or is that still a process? I'll, I'll let I'll let you know when I'm comfortable <laughs> with it. Perfect. Yeah, I, mean, I can run through it. Like I can finish pages pretty quickly for the most part, uh, as long as I don't I'm not distracted. And uh, I believe I've mentioned several uh, episodes that uh. I have four kids, so yeah. <laughs> the time to work sometimes is not as great as I want it to be. But um, I mean, I pretty much have been using it since school, and I complained about it the entire time I was in school. Okay. And afterwards, I complained about it until I was like, okay, I need to really just buckle down and like figure out the key points. And it, a lot of it was a good port of, portion of it was honestly um, Quentin screenshotting or not screenshotting, but screen sharing. Yeah, um, he was screen sharing, and when we were doing our when I first joined, started joining the stream, and uh, he was using Clip, and I was so I was asking questions about that, like specifically, like certain things, like does mine not coming out the way it yours is coming out the way it should look what, for some reason, and it was like a simple thing. I didn't resize the image, you know what I mean? I had it like seventy two DPI, and the lines were coming out so like so pixelated and so wrong. Right. So like just simple things like that, like. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to you're going to forget to do it. I like I said, I was having issues just trying to explain to you what to do, but um, just practice, practice that. And if you have questions, anybody has questions, Tim is now an expert. <laughs> yes, I, I'm now certified. I've got my I passed. <laughs> right. I mean, you guys can hit me up on my social medias. Like, if I can help you, I'll help you. And our social medias can be found here. Uh, we uh, are down Quentin and Aaron, but their tags are on that uh, banner as well. And I'm there. I'm also on Twitter, which is where I'm most active, mostly sharing uh, Destiny memes and, and uh, oh, also falling down the spiral. Yeah, finding other Kickstarters that have been posted <laughs> on there. Um, uh, our Kickstarter for Wolf Hunter and Sirens number one remix uh, hit our second stretch goal. So that means that I will be writing. <laughs> Yeah, super cool. So it means that I'm going to be writing the history edition, which is going to be an add-on to the digital copy, uh, essentially giving you historical context. So uh, I get to explain uh, the histories of the situations, um, the mechanics and the machines used. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll go over the, like the Second Battle of Dover, um, the uh, machines used there, what the references are. Uh, the laws at play that allowed the special operations ex executive to exist the way they did and how exactly they refer to domestically since they weren't normally a domestic operation, but uh, Churchill knew that there were spies in England and knew he needed people to be on the lookout for them. So how he got around uh, the official secrets act that will get explained more in the second issue. Um, but yeah. Uh, this is uh, my, my brainchild, so I'm super happy to actually have it out and uh, ready to uh, get into people's hands here shortly. Yeah, that's gonna be neat, man. Like, uh, you need to get someone to just put little illustrations of you pointing at the, like the different things, right? <laughs> uh, well, now I'm a master in Clip Studio, so I'll put those in that's, myself. Oh, that's right, yeah. you put it yourself. Good <laughs> yeah. job. <laughs> the lines will be super clean, but I'm still going to look right from because uh, the, the anatomy and the shapes will not be there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have been uh, that several line show on Tuesday. Uh, Jose, do you have anything that you need to plug or anything coming up? Um, coming up soon, I think in May, I believe uh, the obsoletes and oh, three books. Wow, I just drew like obsoletes, cray, and. Oh, beyond the stars! Oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I forgot that. <laughs> Roland's gonna punch me in the nose. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Is doo -doo -doo. I'm so bad at this. Yeah, I believe that's it's what's called like beyond the stars, or man. But anyway, it is that's those three. It's gonna come out, and I'm excited and. Roland will know more and be able to tell you more about it. I probably shouldn't say much more past that, but sure. yeah, I'm excited. Explain that on uh, the, our Silver Sunday show, which is on the same channel at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. You can also catch us uh, tomorrow. Well, not us, but people tangential to us uh, on uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Wednesdays with the uh, Wizard 8 Wham crew. Uh, we will be back next Tuesday with, uh, I believe, a special guest talking what? about uh manga and comics history and uh, possibly some team and t stuff 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it'll, be, it'll be a good time. Uh, we don't have a Kickstarter at the moment now, but we should have one out here shortly again because we got a lot of books that we need to get oh, into. Oh, man. Hands. Yeah. So much. So many books. Uh, and uh, be on the lookout for maybe some also uh, some announcements regarding another book besides Wolf Hunter that I may have uh, done some typing on. Uh, but um, uh, if you did back the Kickstarter, make sure to check your emails because you're going to get an invitation to a survey here soon. Uh, we need to confirm shipping addresses, the name that goes in the thank you page, and all that good stuff to make sure that you actually get the book that you ordered in the condition that you want with your name the way that you are named yeah. uh, or choose to be. Um, uh, so uh, make sure to be on the lookout for that in your emails. Uh, we'll see you here next time. And until then, remember to make mine, make mine silver, silver line. line. Hey, I'm Alex Savio. And I just want to let you know, make mine silver line.